Hi, I'm Gordon Waite. I'm working on fabricating two telescope mirrors. These are both 22 inch in diameter and they're both F4. And these two mirrors are going to be part of a binoscope, binocular telescope system. Uh, this is a huge binoscope and in any binocular telescope one of the important aspects of it is that the two mirrors have to have the same focal length as close as possible. So I'm using my spherometry station here uh, this is a computer controlled spherometer to do a final measurement on this mirror. It's finished with its fine grinding. Uh, this came pre-fabricated, or uh, excuse me, pre-generated from Newport glass. Uh, a 22 inch F4 mirror, the focal length would be 88 inches, so the radius would be twice that, or 176 inches. So we're shooting for a number close to 176 inches. My strategy though is to pretty much get this close to that goal and then have the other mirror match it. So uh, I'll use the second mirror and adjust it to match this first one. So right now I'm using a digital spherometer. This is the spherometer head and you can see here that it has three feet. Each of the feet has a ceramic ball and those three feet define a plane which the center foot measures from. If you see in the background here where the digital readout is, as I push the center probe in and out the reading changes on the spherometer. The radius on this from each foot to the center is two and a half inches so the effective diameter would be a five inch uh, tester so this has what I call a five inch diameter test plate. So over here I have a granite surface plate and this particular granite surface plate is flat to one ten thousandth of an inch and this is the reference I use uh, to put these three feet down on and those three feet will define a plane and thus I can take it from the granite onto the mirror to actually measure the sagitt of the surface and the computer inside the spherometer converts that sagitt reading directly into a radius here. So on the test of this mirror what's important is for it to be close to a, uh, the 176 inches that we want and it's also important that no matter where I test on this mirror it always have this, has the same radius of curvature because that means that this is a good sphere. So on my surface plate, I put the probe down, and there's a zero button on it, and that zeroes it and tells it that I've now defined a plane. It's really, really sensitive, so you have to uh, make sure you get a good zero on it. Still moving a little bit here. Okay, now I've got a good zero on the spherometer. I take it off here and put the spherometer in the center of the mirror. And the measurement comes up. 176.131 inches. So the target was 176 even. It's right now at 176.131. So my radius is over by 13 one hundredths of an inch. Uh, so it's just a little over a tenth of an inch. Now the focal length would be half that, so the focal length is off by only six and a half hundredths of an inch. So I want any measurement I take on here to be the same. So we'll remember 176.131 and we'll move this out on the mirror a little bit and sure enough we get 176.131 if I want to take a mirror on the very very edge I turn it so that two of the feet are right on the edge and once again I get a measurement of 176.131 inches so this entire surface this 22 inch mirror now has a radius of 176.131 inches and it's a good sphere so this has been ground with 25 micron, 12 micron, and 9 micron microgrit aluminum oxide abrasive. And now that I have a good sphere, this is ready to go into polishing. I'll do the polishing on my normal uh, fixed post high speed polisher. And uh, hopefully we'll keep that, uh, the mirror spherical during that polishing. That's the point of using the, the high speed fixed point polisher. So we're all set here. We're looking good. So it's time to move on to the next step and uh, get that second mirror to the same radius as this one.